Hey guys, this is Nate from RunDreamAchieve.com. Hope you guys are having a great evening. Uh, today's video, I want to talk on what happens to your body when you run a half marathon. I get this question asked quite a bit on the channel as well as on, uh, on the website as well. And over the years, I've experienced a lot of what I'm going to be discussing. I'm going to be kind of covering uh, about 10 different things that I know from personal experience of what exactly happens to your body when you run a half marathon. The first thing that happens when you run run a half marathon is definitely muscle inflammation. I mean, this is uh, just the, the micro tears, things that happen to our bodies when we're racing, running very, very uh, hard over hills and, or over flat terrain. Um, anytime you're, you're running a, a half marathon, uh, most oftentimes you're gonna be running it on concrete or, or pavement. Uh, that's just the uh, the nature of the beast when it comes with uh, w with road racing. But a lot of times, um, if you're fortunate, uh, there's there are half marathons that are on uh, trails, uh, that are on dirt roads. I remember running a few half marathons in Colorado that were on dirt roads, but still you have to deal with uh, muscle inflammation. It's just one of the things uh, that that comes with pushing your body to the limit. So. Uh, that for certain is the is one uh, thing that happens to your body when you run a half marathon. The second thing is there's minor injuries. Sometimes we we deal with injuries um, prior to running our half marathons that that lead up to um, more significant types of injuries that that happen after a half marathon. Uh, examples of this are shin splints or plantar fasciitis. Um, muscle strains that, that, that occur from just pushing the body so hard. Um, you know, over the years I've had numerous uh, injuries from uh, three knee surgeries where they had to go in and remove uh, floating bodies. Uh, and that mainly was on account of running on hard surfaces. Uh, fortunately that happened years ago, back from like 1997, 1998, uh, when I was in college. And that is um, very, uh, that's one of those types of injuries that doesn't take uh, it takes a while to recover from. So um, obviously doing all the right things, making sure you're icing, making sure you're um, getting off of that that injured area of your body, making sure that you back off from your training. That is the number one uh, recommended way to, to overcome th these types of um, things that occur from running a half marathon. So uh, black toenails. I've had, uh, I've lost count of how many of those I've had over the years. Uh, my wife kind of jokes about it all the time, uh, at least past few years. Uh, she's like, you got another one of those black toes? I'm like, yeah, I got another one. So a lot of times it can be from um, running a, a half marathon in either shoes that you didn't break in enough, or it's just from the the, the friction of, of you know each, each foot strike on the ground when you're pushing your, your toes into your front of the shoe. Uh, blisters. Man, I've had endless amounts of blisters. Uh, make sure if you're if you're running, um, definitely if you're going to run a half marathon, make sure you break in those shoes before you you go and you race. Make sure your shoes are are definitely um, n not brand new when you go into running a half marathon. You, it's difficult because when you're running a half marathon all out, uh, regardless, you're going to be going up and down. Um, you're constantly you're going to be pushing your body to the limit when you're running a half marathon. So getting blisters is kind of part of the deal when it comes to uh, racing all out in in any type of event, whether it's the the mile all the way up to the the marathon distance. But the half marathon is such a long event, 13.1 miles, 21.1 kilometers. Uh, getting blisters is kind of one of the things that definitely happens to your body when you run a half marathon. Um, really just goes back to prevention after you're done, uh, making sure you're taking care of yourself, but, uh, preferably don't wear new shoes when you're, when you run a half marathon, make sure you get those shoes broken in, um, wear socks, do not wear, uh, do not run a half marathon without socks. I've done that in the past, like an idiot. And I had to learn my lesson. I remember running also a 20 kilometer race, uh, called the big boy classic in Wheeling, West Virginia one of the hardest uh, courses I've ever run in my life. And I was still, I think, a f sophomore in college at the time. Um, and I did not wear socks in that race. It was uh, definitely a big mistake on my part. And the entire bottom of my foot uh, was completely um, peeled off. So it was an, an enormous blister. Uh, so definitely learn from your mistakes, learn from other athletes' mistakes. Um, 
and, and definitely wear the right shoes. Make sure you have socks on your feet when you run your race. Um, coughs and colds, you're, you're pushing your body to the limit. Um, so it's kind of normal to weaken the body's immune system after, especially immediately after a half marathon event. You're, you're really pushing your body so hard. Um, a lot of times athletes are not hydrating well enough in the race. Uh, so just lack of, um, lack of hydration, uh, pushing your body so hard. Uh, it's, it's most oftentimes very normal to get a cough or, or, or you know, repetitive cough after a race uh, that lasts anywhere from a few hours to sometimes a couple days after the race. I've had that numerous times as well. Uh, cramps. Cramps, you're going to oftentimes get them in the race. Um, oftentimes it can be a lot of different reasons. It could, you know, be a, a, a lack of um, uh, hydration, a lack of fluids that, you know, uh, happen in the in, while you're racing. Oftentimes it can also be from, because you're hydrating so much in the race, you can get a cramp. Uh, belly breathing is very uh, effective at times, not always, but at times when you're racing, um, you kind of just suck in your, your gut and then you let it out. A lot of times that can ease a little bit of the pain in um, when you get a, a stomach cramp. Uh, if you get a cramp um, in your calves, and I've had those happen a lot of times, even when I ran 219, uh, I had to brief, uh, briefly stop in that race at the 2007 California International Marathon. Um, you know, I lost a few seconds, but um, you got to stop. And, and sometimes stopping and just uh, uh, stretching the muscle out, but very lightly, not hard, very light stretch because it's going to be very tender. Uh, cramps is very normal as well in the race. Uh, lightheadedness. Um, you know, after the race, especially during the race, again, it all goes back to just the exertion that... Um, you're, you're, you're putting yourself through in that race. Um, and, and as well, most oftentimes it's very difficult even to get the hydration component, um, aspect of, of running a half marathon, right. Even oftentimes when we think we're drinking enough, we're oftentimes not drinking enough. And it, it all goes back to lightheadedness is, is normal to, to happen after a, a half marathon and during the half marathon too. Um, a lot of times it's just, like I said, uh, it's the exertion and, and not drinking enough and just knowing that you've pushed your body to the limit almost uh, during that race is uh, really makes lightheadedness uh, one of the reasons that one of the ways, um, one of the things that happens to your body when you run a half marathon. Uh, sore feet, uh, definitely after a half marathon is definitely normal. Uh, the fact that you're, you're your body is with each foot strike. It's called foot strike hemolysis, where you're you're bursting red blood cells each time you hit um, hit the pavement, and that repetitive over thousands of times when we run these half marathons. Um, sore feet after a race is definitely going to be normal, and a lot of that is you know accumulation of uh, lactic acid, as well as a red blood cell bur um, bursting in, in the bottom of your feet each time you strike the ground. So, uh, like I said, a lot of these. Um, with time, you always heal, your body always heals and adapts after the half marathons, but these are things that definitely happen and occur uh, during and definitely after the, the half marathon. Uh, loss of water weight is definitely normal because you're sweating so much in the race, so definitely make sure you hydrate well uh, after you've, you've, done, you've completed your race. Uh, it's not uncommon to lose a couple pounds of, of weight, mainly from um, just the the loss of water uh, from sweating and and during your half marathon race, especially after a uh, half marathon in the heat. Um, and the last thing is definitely uh, after a half marathon, you're going to be struggling with uh, going um, upstairs and downstairs, and and a lot of that is is just an accumulation accumulation of uh, micro tears in your muscle fibers. Um, again, you've pushed your body so hard uh, that. You know, there's a there's a still a level of lactic acid in your in your blood and in your muscles uh, immediately after a half marathon, and especially the day after a half marathon. Uh, all not athletes um, d have the same uh, amount of issues after half marathons as others. There's some athletes that can really uh, run a half marathon or or a longer race like the half mar or the full marathon and really recover quickly. Uh, but there, we all have different physiologies um, in, in terms of how we recover and how fast we recover and what we do uh, during the race and especially what we do after the race to recover quickly. So uh, a few key points I want to leave you guys with in terms of prevention is make sure you're hydrating well uh, during the race and especially after the race. 
Um, do not get in a rush after you run a half marathon. Uh, it's very uh, not uncommon for us to want to continue to run. Uh, it's, it's, you can jog if you want after um, a half marathon just to kind of shake out your legs and try to get out that lactic acid, but it's really better to, to uh, have either active rest, either go out for a nice easy walk or complete rest. Uh, if you have the, if you're like me, um, earlier on in my career where you just cannot slow down, you cannot uh, allow yourself uh, a day off, get in the deep end of a pool, go to a swimming, you know, get into um, the YMCA or, or go to, if you have a pool, get into a pool where you take off out all of the um, impact of running uh, on, on pavement, whether on uh, concrete pavement or even on soft surfaces like grass. Uh, definitely get in the deep end of a pool and, and to spend um, some time in the pool where you don't have any of that impact. Preferably, I highly advise taking at least a week off after a half marathon. Complete rest. Allow yourself time to recover and enjoy some time off. Every runner, regardless if you're a beginner or you're an advanced level athlete, needs some time off and relax. Take a breather. Um, you'll do much more good taking that time off. When I was training for the half marathons and marathons, uh, I, I would think nothing of taking off uh, a week to two weeks and I would eat whatever I wanted. I would drink whatever I wanted. Um, I, I, could, I could care less uh, what my diet was like, um, especially during my off time. During those two weeks, during that week, I would relax. I would definitely hydrate well, but at the same time, I would definitely you know, uh, ease up and, and, and relax and enjoy my time off because once I got back into the the, the game of, of training for my races, I was 100% focused and committed. So um, that downtime is very important. Uh, know that immediately after half marathon, you've beaten your body up. So make sure you're, you're hydrating well, getting plenty of uh, fruits and vegetables in there. Um, still enjoy your diet and you know have some other foods that you enjoy, but definitely have plenty of fruits and vegetables. Hydrate well. Um, uh, take a multivitamin, uh, make sure you're getting a, a high dose of vitamin C, niacin, zinc, uh, especially these, these vitamins and minerals are very, very critical to immune um, support and in improving that your immune system. So again, your, your immune system is very weak after you're running a half marathon, so make sure you take niacin, zinc, vitamin C. Uh, those are very important. And also research glutathione, that's another um, antioxidant the body produces that very few athletes know anything about. Google ant, uh, glute, glutathione and definitely study super compensation. So you know what occurs after you do those hard workouts at hard races like the half marathon and what occurs after you relax and you have that rest period. It's very important to know and study super compensation. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, hit that bell icon, hit the subscribe button so when I make new videos you'll be notified. Uh, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, always support of the channel helps it grow. Uh, any comments or concerns, questions you guys have, feel free to leave me a comment below the video. I'll also leave some resources below as I always do on all my videos. Um, definitely check out RunDreamAchieve.com if you're looking for any training programs or uh, running courses uh, and reach out to me as well uh, by email if you guys have a question, specific question. Um, if there's a topic you want me to discuss in my next video, leave it below and I will talk to you guys all in the next video.